Hey guys, welcome to the pre-show. Today is uh, part seven, episode yep. seven of a series that we've been doing for, uh, well, seven weeks now um, on how to sell your house without a realtor. Uh, you can sell it on your own, you definitely can, but if you wanna get the most money out of your home that you possibly can or that the market will bear and you wanna do it as quickly as possible, uh, you should be at least watching all these videos and taking our advice because we do this for a living. We help sellers. We take the burden off of them and do all the things that we are explaining in this series um, so you can be successful when you want to sell it on your own. Uh, we're just doing a pre-show right now. We're going to start here in about a minute at 3 o'clock. We're giving YouTube some time to... Um, gather people together. Gather people, alert people, everybody who uh, uh, wants to watch the show. If you are watching live or if you're watching the replay, if you have questions about real estate anywhere, it doesn't matter if you're in Montana or Europe, I don't care. But um, <laughs> if you have questions about real estate, Cindy's looking at the chat over here and we will try and answer your question here live. If you're watching on the replay, just drop it in the comments section and we will get to you right away. Um, so like I said, today is episode seven. We're going to talk about some marketing tactics. If you've done everything up to now, um, we're going to show you what we think that you can do, free and paid, to get the word out that your house is for sale. It's All right, it's 3 o'clock. It's time to start. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Mike Jones. This is my cohort, Sidekick. And uh, oh, by the way, it's Valentine's Day. Oh, well, happy Valentine's Day. I, I told her Valentine's Day. By the Valentine's. way, I'm Cindy. He didn't mention who I am. <laughs> I did tell her happy <laughs> Valentine's Day today. I hope everybody's got good plans and having a fantastic day. I know the weather here in Jacksonville is absolutely perfect. It's great. So anyway, today, episode seven of how to sell your house without a realtor. You can do it. And we're here to try and give you some helpful information and some tips and advice on how to do that. And uh, like I said in the pre-show, if you want to be successful, if you want to get the most for your house that the market will bear and you want to sell your house as quickly as possible, take our advice, listen to the show from episode one all the way through. We've actually talked about the importance of pre-listing home inspections and getting all the repairs done ahead seven of, how to of putting your house on the market. And um, we talked about uh, doing it, having it professionally cleaned inside and out, what you need to do to increase your curb appeal. Um, and there's two types of curb appeal. We talked about that. There's digital curb appeal and there's curb appeal, physical, real curb appeal. There's a big difference. We talked about professional staging, professional photos. We talked about video last week. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk to you. We're going to bring it all together and give you some um, opinions and some, and some tips and recommendations on where to market your home. And the goal here is to keep you off of Zillow. Zillow's hurting you. I can't, I cannot express enough if you're for sale by owner and you put your house on Zillow, how bad you are shooting yourself in the foot and you're just setting yourself up for failure. Um, I'm actually going to do another video about uh, Zestimates and how Zillow gets it wrong most of the time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm also going to do a follow-up video. If you look on our YouTube channel at Mike and Cindy YouTube, Dot com if you're watching this somewhere else. I actually have a video about Zillow and how it hurts you as a for sale by owner. So go back and check that out. It's very informational or informative. Anyway, let's get to the day's show. So you got professional photos, you've staged your property, you've done all the repairs, you've got a video. Now what do you do with it? First things first. So, we're, so, so once y'all have done all that we've talked about, it is time to go live and we're going to be talking about marketing strategies today where are you going to put it on the internet so that buyers will come buy your house yes marketing strategies so first off there are a number of um free sites that you can actually advertise on and now listen this could really be a very long video today because this is where Cindy and I excel. This is what we love to do. We love to market homes and we have uh, just barely scratched the surface of some possible ways that you as a for sale by owner can do this yourself. But 
I can't, I don't have the time to sit here and explain how to do everything. So you're going to have to actually do some research <clears throat> on your own. It's very easy. YouTube is a great uh, source of information. If you want to find out how to do these things or how to set these things up. So I'm going to go through it pretty quick um, just to give you some ideas. And you can, of course, rewind and, and take notes, whatever you want to do. Um, but some free websites that you can get um, are... Uh, don't cost you any money because they're free. Like I said, they're free. WordPress.com. It's a blogging platform. And a, a blogging platform is the same thing as a website. This this has, you can, you can write multiple blogs. And uh, if you do this, you go on there, you just set it up. It's very easy to do. What you want to do is just create your site there. Or there's some others like um, blogger.com. That's another free one. I think Google Plus is still around. You can do it there. Um, you can write blogs on a million different free uh, websites. Just need to Google it. Free websites uh, and, and it'll come up. I recommend WordPress.com and Blogger.com because I'm familiar with those. Okay. There are some paid sites out there as well. Um, they are, uh, here's a couple that come to mind, Wix.com. You see there are commercials all over TV all the time, at least I do, um, because this is something that I do, Wix.com. Um, it's, it's just in, in the top of my mind all the time. Another one is Squarespace.com, and these are very inexpensive and easy, uh, operator-friendly websites, and you can just use this for the time that you need it. So it's not like you've got to sign up for multiple years. You just sign up for this. When you sell your house, you just delete it. You're done. You don't have to continue to pay for it. Um, another one is GoDaddy.com. Um, GoDaddy.com has um, some pretty good tech support. If you get into problems building your website, they have actually when you go and buy a domain name, which we'll talk about in a minute, if you go to GoDaddy, they actually have a um, option for you to go ahead and build a website and they'll help you out with it. Uh, it's very easy to do and it's something that you should look into. Um, now that I'm talking about paid sites and free sites, um, let me just give you an example of one of the websites that we have going on right now. This property, um, we actually have listed, it's actually under contract. We are getting ready to close on this in a few weeks. And a little backstory on this property. Um, this is actually the website. Um, you can see it's uh, the domain name up here in the top left-hand corner is 14049carsoncourt.com. This house was previously listed with another real estate agent with another real estate company. It was listed for about 187 days. It did not sell. The seller called us and he took the advice that we are giving you in this series and uh, we ended up he did everything we asked him to do and we raised the price ten thousand dollars we got it under contract in only 31 days so it's very effective what we're telling you now as you can see up here in the left hand side underneath the domain name I've got houses for sale near the Mayo Clinic crosswater at Pablo Bay in Jacksonville Florida I'm gonna explain why that's important you got to optimi optimize your sites to be search engine friendly. It's called SEO. That's another term that you want to Google. You need to make sure that you have some hot keywords related to your property so it'll come up in the search engines after you've done your website. You can see this is the top of the or the front of the page, the front page of the website. Over here on the right hand side, we've got some buttons here, overview, amenities, photos. They can contact us and they can see a map of exactly where the property is located. That's important because I think 72% of the people who buy a house in Jacksonville, Florida come from another city. So that's something, that's a very good information for people that are looking for houses online. <clears throat> Coming on down, we can scroll on down or we can click the little buttons, but you have a photo gallery. <coughs> you can click that to see the large photos and then also a video. As we explained, video is very important. I'll show you that in just a minute. But here we have the overview. The price of the house is 419.9, four bedrooms, three baths, 2,482 square feet. And you can see the text description, which we also discussed in a previous video. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you tell a story and point out the good features of the house. You can see I use those keywords, Mayo Clinic, very hot uh, keyword uh, search. It's searched a lot because a lot of people who move in here are coming and they want to be near the Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic's like 
you know, one of the best that there is. So a lot of people, especially people coming from other states like New York that are moving here, retiring or whatever, they want to be close to the best hospital possible. So the Mayo Clinic is a heavily searched term. So I've got that popped in here in several places as well as the actual name of the subdivision, Crosswater Bay, uh, Crosswater at Pablo Bay. Now, I'm actually going to um, zoom in on this because I think I want you to be able to kind of see, and I know that on the replay or the way this is going through the software, though it might be a little bit difficult for you to read, but you can see I put Mayo Clinic in there several times. I put the, the uh, subdivision Crosswater at Pablo Bay. I've even got some links. You can see this is an event calendar. Crosswater at Pablo Bay has a lot of activities for the uh, residents, and that goes right, this is a clickable link, goes right to their event calendar. There's also a link right here that goes to their Facebook page, I believe, or their website that talks about the community and has a lot of information. Again, there's Crosswater at Pablo Bay. I've referenced it there. It's a keyword, hot keyword. And the Mayo Clinic. Another clickable link. Another clickable link. Links are important inside of a website, so if you can... By the way, if you can't see this where we're showing it to you when we're done with this, you can go to the website 14049 carsoncourt.com because this is still a live web page. All of this is still live. You can go there and click on the links and see what we've attached inside here, the video and the photo gallery. So yeah, can... and, and I'll actually link that up in the description box below after the video becomes um, uh, rewatchable or whatever it is. But you can also see too, if you're in a, if you're in a really good school district, schools, a lot of people come and buy homes if they have school-aged children in the family. They buy homes based on the school district. Absolutely. We have a lot of buyers that come to town and say, hey, I want to be in X school district. So this one actually has some really good schools. So I've actually put nearby schools in Crosswater at Pablo Bay, Alamakani Elementary, a, a high-rated school, Duncan Fletcher, Duncan Fletcher High School, Duncan Fletcher Middle School. And again, I've got, if you're looking for houses for sale near the Mayo Clinic, again, keywords, very important. Crosswater at Pablo Bay, another link there. Pablo Bay, and I, these are links to other houses for sale in the neighborhood. Now, this is our website. We're actually real estate agents, so we actually put our uh, recent testimonials in all of our websites. It also helps with the search engine optimization. There, you can come down, you can see we've listed the amenities of the house. Uh, you know, this has got a stainless appliance package. It's got gas cooking, which is very hot these days, on-demand water heater. And this is just kind of a uh, summary of the photos. You can click on these photos, um, and you can actually see the large photo gallery. And as you can see, this was professionally staged, professionally photographed. And like I said, this is probably not showing very well through this uh, live broadcast. So if you want to see this in actual in, in an actual web page, go to 14049carsoncourt.com. Let me close this out. We've also got something here where people can get in touch with us. You want people to be able to get in touch with you very easily. You don't want them to have to hunt your information down. If they're interested in your house, they want information or they want to contact you now. They need to be able to do that. So make sure that your contact information is very prominent on your property website. And again, there's a map down here. It's easy enough for you to go and do a screenshot of Google Maps and just put that into your website just like you would any other photo. So that's it for our website. Feel free to check that out if you want to. Um, going back to um, the domain name, I've got this one listed as 14049carsoncourt.com. Now what I did was, um, I actually went to GoDaddy. I buy all my, my domain names through GoDaddy, but there are other sources that you can do that. Um, but why you want to go and make a domain name, if you go to any website and you create a website, you're going to get automatically that website, whoever you buy it from, is going to create a domain name. For example, you can see in the bottom right hand here, this is the actual, the website I use is, uh, is called Rella, and uh, they create their own domain name. And as you can see, this domain name that they put here, the HTTP, semicolon, forward slash, forward slash. You see how that's hard? If I wanted to tell someone that my house was for sale 
and I had to tell them that they could see the pictures and the information online and I had to recite this to them. First off, it's not very memorable. Mm -hmm. They're not going to remember it and uh, it's just not something that you want to be able to use. So what I did was I went and bought the website name above it, 14049carsoncourt.com and you can see that that's a lot easier to remember and you want to use this domain name on all of your advertising whether it be uh, flyers, um, any blogs that you do, any Facebook pages, and we'll talk about that, any tweets and things like that. You want to use this domain name. It's easier for people to use, remember, mm -hmm. and uh, it will definitely, uh, it, what you got to do is you got, got to go into your hosting provider or wherever you bought the domain name from, say for instance, GoDaddy or HostGator, you got to go there and you got to set it up through them. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't have the time to explain how to do this. It's very easy, but it's easy for me because I've been doing it for <laughs> yeah. so long. But um, if you just do some research and Google it, you'll find out how to do that. But you want to make it easy for people to find you. Um, where are we at now, Cindy? We talked about free websites, which is WordPress.com, Blogger.com, paid websites, Wix.com, Squarespace.com, and GoDaddy. And there's a million others. Just Google it. We talked about domain names where you can buy one. And if you buy a domain name, it's going to cost you less than $15 for a year. For cheap. Yeah, that's cheap. So if your house is on the market for more than a year, well. We need to talk. We need to talk, <laughs> but you can also, you can renew it at the end of the year for another year if you like. <laughs> yeah, you won't need it that long. Yeah. If you do so, all, if you all were telling you, you're not going to need that long. So where else are we going to be putting this on the internet? How do we get this, how do we get this out here um, over the internet to find to get to buyers. All right, so we talked about you need to have a web page, a website. It's very important that you put it there. Keep it off Zillow. Please don't put it on Zillow. <clears throat> you can do this without Zillow because Zillow is only taking your your buyers from you anyway. So you need to create a Facebook page, even if you're not on Facebook. Go on there, create a Facebook. You need a personal account first, and you can just put a fake account if you don't want to be on Facebook. Okay, you got to have that personal account, and then you want to go through there and create a business page. Make your business page all about your house. Put all the photos, put the video, you can embed it right off of YouTube. YouTube, you just go where it says share underneath your video that you've hosted on YouTube. Share, hit the embed, or you can actually copy the link. But if you embed it, you can take that code, put it on your website, and it'll actually be a video that people can push play right there in the site. They don't have to go anywhere else. You can also embed that on Facebook, okay? Um, social media is where it's at these days. If you're not on social media, you're missing the boat. And I know a lot of people, are they, they swear off of social media of any kind. They don't want to be on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. They don't want to be on any of that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, this is where you need to be. You've got to get your... You've got to get you've got to let people know that your yeah. house is for sale and this is where society is these days. The majority of people, like it or not, have a smartphone in their hand and if you're not in their phone, you are you cease to exist. So these are very very important places for you to share your content. And what happens is when you put your uh, house for sale on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, it becomes shareable content. Shareable content is what you want. You want people to go, oh, wow, look at that house for sale. Grandma's looking for a house or mom and dad's looking for a house or sister Sally's looking for a house. Let me send this. Let me share this with them. And then if, it, if it's really nice and it's done well, it's going to get shared a lot. And it, that's why it's so important. I can't stress enough. I could do an entire episode six <laughs> hours about why it's so day. important to be on these websites. Yeah. And don't forget Twitter. Here's what happens. If you create a Facebook page, create it as a business page and put your house on there, here's what you need to do. Every time you have someone coming over to show your house, check in. Check, you can check in on Facebook on your phone and say, showing this fantastic house today. Would you like to take a look? And what happens is now that, that's more content that gets shared and shared and shared. Twitter is another thing. I actually sold a house, was on the market for three years. Oh, yeah. Not with me, with another you, company. I was going to tell you to share that with them. Three years. The seller lived out of state. They were making double mortgage payments. Oh, gosh. Yeah. 
they finally gave us a call. And this is when social media was actually first just kind of getting started. I mean, not, not getting started, but it was starting to be mainstream as far as marketing. Yeah. Uh, companies were starting to use social media to market, and Twitter was a hot thing. I listed this property, and with three days, I had her an offer. Within three days. Within yes. three days. And the buyer saw, found the house on Twitter. So it's very important. It works. It works. It works. It works. You've got to be on these things. Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. Instagram's fantastic for sharing properties. I put um, listings on my Instagram page. I've only been doing Instagram for about a year. And uh, those things get more uh, traffic. And it's not just likes on the actual photo, because a lot of people will see the photo, look at it, and they'll like it in their mind, but they don't necessarily give you a heart. But you can go back and look at the analytics on it and see how many people have viewed that property. Um, there's so many things that you can do with the analytics on it too. And as, as far, going back to Facebook, there are Facebook groups that you can actually advertise your house on. Uh, you know, here in Duval County, there's, I don't know how many swip swap groups, uh, for sale groups. Um, uh, there's actually groups for just, just for real estate for sale. So you can actually share your page that you've created or share the link to your website on these groups. And then it'll get passed around and shared between people. Uh, so I know this is very, um, it can be very, if you're not into this and you don't do this on a regular basis, it could probably seem like it's very overwhelming. And that's why um, if, if it just becomes too overwhelming or you just think it's just too much for you to do, you don't have time to learn it, I get it. That's why you call us. If we can help you in any way, get your house sold, we are happy to do it. So reach out to us. Um, we actually have a question. We do. What is the question? Bill, Bill is asking a question. He is asking if um, if there's a better time of the year, a season, <clears throat> that is better to sell a house in. Well, Bill, we appreciate you watching and we appreciate the question. And it really depends on where you live. Um, historically, here in Duval County, Florida, we have you know pretty much year-round activities. So selling a house is pretty much you can do it year-round. I will tell you that um, in the past, it's always been believed that most people like to buy houses or move when school is out. Um, I don't think that's necessarily as true as it used to be. Um, we're actually seeing, usually, I, we've been, I've been in the business for 20 years, Cindy's been in for 15. Um, in our market, we have seen over the past couple of years, the holidays through about this time of year till about the end of February is typically slow, but the last two years we haven't seen much of a slowdown. So I think the old ways of thinking is that uh, in our area that the best time to put your house on the market is when school's getting ready to let out. I don't think that that's necessarily true. And there can also be a negative to that too because right, a lot of people exactly. are in the mindset that that's the best time to put their house on the market. And if you wait till then to put your house on the market and everybody else yeah. thinks the same thing, now you're competing with more properties. That's absolutely so true. In our area, I think yeah. any time that you need to sell a house right. is a good time. Yeah. If you're not in a hurry or you, you don't have you know a pressing situation where you have to move, I would probably say, you know, well, again, if I tell you to list in the springtime, right. now you've got more competing properties to deal with. Um, where if, if you list during the holidays, there's less on the market for people to choose from. So those people that are yeah. looking during the holidays, they're typically more serious for one thing. And if there's less houses to pick from, that makes your house more valuable right? so it's, and more likely to sell. You know what? Hearing you say that, it makes me almost think that what used to be the norm mm -hmm. is now the opposite because... Yeah. When, when we start to see the slowdown in the fall, which is right before Thanksgiving, ho Thanksgiving mm -hmm. holidays, which everybody says, oh, I'm going to take my house off the market now since it hasn't sold, and I'm going to wait till the spring, like everybody else does. So it's the same thing. However, if you take your house off the market in thanks by the Thanksgiving holidays when uh, everybody else does, uh, the thing about it is, is if you leave yours on the market in the fall, then everybody else is taking it off the market you're the only one there. Less competition. Not the only one. You know what I mean? So it's almost the opposite of what you think. So the, so the bottom line is there's really no 
specific just say that summer's the best time to sell I mean what what is in and, and basically the question is what, what does it mean by the best time to sell it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna make more money well and, and a lot of people have different right? motivations so, too. a lot yeah. of a lot of the answer to that question there's a lot of variables and in real estate yeah. that's the way it is um, it's almost, it's almost it, it like... It depends if, on what your yeah, motivation right, is. But if you've exactly, got to sell your house yeah. because you've got to be in right. Texas for a new job that you got to start next yeah. month, well, now's the best time yeah. to sell. Um, if you don't have that kind of a motivation, if you're just wanting to downsize or you're wanting to right. upsize, you just want to move across town um, because you want to be closer to work or closer to the grandkids, well, maybe there is a better time of the year. Now, yeah. nationally speaking... Yeah. All the experts and the gurus, I've actually got a video <laughs> on my YouTube channel about when the best time to sell is. Nationally speaking, is yeah. uh, they they do all the research and, and everything, is uh, in May. So, but that's that's taking all the states into account. So like in Montana, you know, they've got uh, rough, long winters. People don't buy a lot of houses when it's snowstorming and, and <clears throat> six feet of snow on the ground. Um, all those northern states got that problem, so it's a con it's a con it's a conglomeration of all the states that they came up with that month of May. It's almost like when somebody asks us a question about real estate, even the simple question that you asked, it's almost like we have about three to five questions that we need to ask you to exactly. get you the best answer. So, uh, and, and that's just what we do because there's reasons behind why you're asking that. We would want to know those reasons to try to help you best. But then again, like, like Mike says, if you have, a, you have to be somewhere in 30 days to work up north, well, now is the best season to sell. So, so obviously, um, I don't know, if, hopefully we helped you out a little bit. There's really no best, best time. And, and like I said, everybody that was taking their house off the market in, in the fall is about to put it on the market here in a couple weeks. They're like, yeah. everybody says, oh, the 1st of March. That means everybody's gonna be put on the first of March. Now you got now buyers are gonna be looking at a ton more houses to choose from instead of only a, a small handful. So I will give you a little bit of advice though. If you're not in a situation where you have a time frame that you have to sell, and you think that, or you think that you might be selling um, in the holidays, you might be listing your house on the holidays. Go ahead and get your photos done in the summertime or the springtime. Because you don't want oh, to put yeah. photos out there with your when your grass has gone dormant yeah. and all the leaves are off the trees and things like that. So, if you're planning on selling, just say in next next October, go ahead and have your pictures taken when the flowers are blooming and the trees yeah. are in, in green. Yeah. So he does. Bill says actually he is in the Northeast. In the it's Northeast, yeah. yeah. So I, I would have to go with that national statistic. Um, given to me by, not given to me, but you can do the research yourself. Nationally, May is the best time. So if you're not pressed for time, May would be the time. But keep in mind, especially in the Northeast, everybody's going to be doing that. Or not everybody, but there's the a most, lot more most, inventory coming on the market that's more for buyers to pick from. Yeah. Now they're not nearly as uh, I have, yeah. desperate to buy your home. I have... I have a gentleman, a buyer, a little family who has been trying to get here from New York for two years. And for two years in a row, he's had to take his house off the market for the entire winter because it's iced down. <laughs> and um, so he's still waiting to sell his house. And in fact, he did the same thing this year. He took his house off the market um, because it didn't sell for whatever reason. And now, you know, he's having to do the same thing, wait for everything to thaw out, the grass to come back, the flowers to come out for you know for him to sell so I do understand that uh, where you're from so Bill that was an excellent question yeah. I wish we had a more definitive answer for you but we don't like I said there's a lot of variables and a lot of things when it comes to real estate and uh, we just can't pinpoint that but if you're in the Northeast um, I think you have different um, obstacles to overcome with snow and snowstorms and things like that but we yeah. don't have that problem here yeah. thankfully i was talking to a buyer the other day from uh where was he new jersey he said it was snowing out i said what's that <laughs> yeah. it was actually 82 that day he said i said the sun will be here when you get here yeah. but you know what buyers are out buyers typically don't stop shopping for houses because buyers right are always having to move you know for whatever reason, buyers are always transferring jobs, and so there's typically a buyer pool out there for your house. 
That's true. Right? So, That's I mean, there, there's, there's not a time that I can, there's never been a time that I can remember where there's no buyers out there to buy. Of course, we, I mean, we've, only, we've only been practicing real estate here in Northeast Florida, so <laughs> right. we don't really know what it's like in, yeah. in your area. So maybe that would be a good guest appearance. We get an agent from up in your, around your area yeah. or one of those really cold states, and we'll talk about yeah. when the best time to buy is. I would like to actually know how bad it affects showings or how yeah. bad the weather affects showings in those areas. Because, hey. I mean, we can play golf here almost year-round. There's maybe one or two <laughs> days a year that it gets really so cold that you don't want to swing a golf club. I have shown houses in the pouring down rain, pouring down rain with umbrella galoshes and the umbrellas flying up. I have literally been driving in tornadoes. It was very dangerous that day. <laughs> in fact, the, the buyer was behind <laughs> me in her car, and I was on. And later on, we were like, did you know that the tornadoes went right through where we were? So I show property. I've never had to show property in an ice storm. That, that's for, that's that's for sure. That's for sure. I have ha I've shown properties when the, winter, the hurricanes were coming and all of that. So buyers are still still go out in some pretty pretty bad weather. So, so listen, anyway. next week, uh, we're probably oh, yeah. going to wrap. I mean, like I said. We're trying to wrap this up, y'all. <laughs> you know, when we started this series, we thought, man there's a lot of stuff that we Aww. can talk about now that we're in episode Aww. seven there we're like man there's a lot of stuff we can talk about yeah. so this series <laughs> could really go on and on and on and on but well, we gotta get your house sold y'all so <laughs> i've given you basically the basics yeah. here um yeah. and if you do all these things and like i said you're gonna today's episode is just gonna kind of give you a bunch of homework to do you just need to go onto youtube and go on to google and search how to do these things um it, it seems like it's a lot, but it, it, if I've been doing this for years. I've developed over years. I mean, when I first started in real estate business, we weren't doing the internet yet. I mean, the internet was around, but we weren't, real estate wasn't, wasn't prominent yeah. on the internet at all. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. when I started, we were just phasing out the books that we <laughs> had to carry around. Yeah. So I have mm -hmm. progressed over 20 years to get to these things. And we do. We what I, what I just yeah. showed you guys is, is just, to help you out. Yeah. Cindy and I do this all day, every day. We market homes, and this is just a very basic mm -hmm. beginning. And I, But I think if you can do these things to avoid, or to, to help you sell your house on your yeah. own, I think you're gonna have a lot better success doing these things than if most for, most for sale by owners, the only thing they do is they put a sign in their front yard and they put it on Zillow. And I, I cannot stress enough um, I had a very, very good question from a seller. Uh, I just listed their house. Um, mm -hmm. And he was concerned because the Zillow Zestimate was at least $200,000 mm -hmm. less than what his house is worth. Um, even backed up by a recent appraisal that he had done. And um, I told him not to be concerned. And, and, and that's what struck me to say, listen, I... I need to go in here and do a video and I'm going to try and get it up by the end of next week. It's not going to be a live. I'm actually going to do a screen capture and go through. Uh, I'm going to find a house that's for sale by owner. I'm going to look at, I'm going to make sure that it's priced here and the estimates down below it. And I'm going to actually pull up the comps and, and come to the reasoning that Zillow used mm -hmm. to come up with that and show you how flawed it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not the, really the only reason it's killing you if you're putting your oh, house for sale by owner we'll on Zillow. It. The other things that's killing you is Zillow makes all their money, 80% of it, their income comes from selling leads to real estate agents and mortgage people. And if you just look at a Zillow ad, go on Zillow and look, you'll see the first three contacts that come up, even on a for sale by owner, are agents that have paid Zillow a ton of money to be in that spot. If yeah. Zillow was to take you as a for sale by owner and funnel those leads to you, these agents aren't going to pay them anymore. So they're going to lose lots and lots and lots of revenue. You've got to understand that. Um, so hopefully what we're doing here has helped you. We're running a little long today. We definitely appreciate you watching. And by the way, anywhere in the country you're watching this from, if you need help, if you need a real estate agent, whether you're buying or selling, we have helped Many people, we've been in the business for a long time. We develop relationship with good quality real estate agents all over the country. So if you have a house to sell or you want to buy a house 
in any state, any city in America, we can, we can refer, help you. We can, we we can, can refer an awesome agent to we'll you. We'll talk to you, find out what your needs and wants are, and we will find an agent that will suit your needs and not theirs. Okay? That's important. It's important that you find a real estate agent that you like and trust, and we can help you find them. And that knows how to do this. Yes. Very important. If they're not doing this, you're paying them too much. That's the thing. Marketing. You know, this is how do agents get buyers? We market the property. Well, not all, is, not all. Agents. Not all agents market, y'all. This is the problem. Well, yeah, not all agents market. This is just the tip of the iceberg to what the marketing level that we do. So um, next week we're gonna give y'all. It's gonna be um, episode eight. Hopefully we're gonna wrap this up for yes. you guys because we know we gotta get your house sold. That's where I was going um, before I got on the bunny trail. Yeah, you sit on the bunny trail. So next week we're gonna wrap this up and we're gonna give showing tips. Now that it's all out there and you've got a buyer walking to the door, now what do you do? <laughs> so we got some awesome showing tips for what happens when the buyer gets to the door. Um, hey, and by the way, yeah. if you are watching in Jacksonville or anywhere in Northeast Florida. This Saturday, if you don't have oh, anything yeah. to do, Jacksonville has a lantern parade. I think it's the first or second one. I'm very excited because yeah. uh, I'm going to go down there. It's actually, it begins at 7 o'clock this Saturday. Just Google Jacksonville Lantern Parade 2019. It'll give you all the information. But you go on the uh, river bank, the river walk on the north side of the river, which is the same side that the Jacksonville Landing's on. I believe it begins underneath, they said the full, full of Warren Bridge, but I think it's the Acosta Bridge. But it's going to go all the way down to the landing. They actually they got uh, those, those uh, lanterns that they put a candle in to make it fly. They're going to do those. After the, I think at 9 o'clock, they're going to have fireworks. Should be a really good time. We're going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. So just look for us if you're down there. Yeah, say, hi. say hi. To say you. you saw us here. Yeah. I'll be holding the camera, no doubt, in my hand. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely um, gonna. Because I'm gonna be all over videos and photos, but we, we hope we to could, see you there. Yeah, we wish we could do the drum, but we're not gonna be able to fly over people. We definitely appreciate your support and yeah. thank you for watching. Until next week, we'll see you. Bye, everybody.